Good evening. Shalom and blessings of peace and joy and prosperity and happiness. May it be upon you tonight and may you bless the God of Israel. Hallelujah. I think I couldn't wait to get here tonight to to talk about I don't going through the storm or there's a shaking going on inside sometimes when just before the change takes place. But for some of you that I've met along the way, I want to thank you for letting me know that that you do watch Blow the Trumpets and that it has been a blessing to you over the years. I want to thank you because it means so much to me when I hear this, then I'm able to share it with the family. So I just want to thank you. Now for those of you that really don't know what the program is about, we are here to help to bring the connection of the Hebrew roots to the community, to be instruments in Father's hands also to help with the word restoring, restoring the Jewishness or restoring the Hebrew part of the good news. And to say to you that the Messiah that we talk about is real and that if you are like me, hallelujah, you want to have someone that you can hold on to when your storm comes or when you're going through the storm or when you're on the other side of the storm having met your challenge. Each and every one of us that are living on this earth has some kind of challenge that is facing each one of us and we need the strength to get through the storm. We could, we could look at, um, on the, um, right now what comes to my mind is, is when Father had called Jonah and told Jonah that Jonah, he was going to send him to Nineveh. Now, I don't think Jonah was trying to find out what kind of gift he had. He had a command that came from our God. And you know the story that Jonah really didn't want to go do this. So Jonah was already um, called to meet a challenge. And we know from looking at his story that he tried to get away from obeying Father. And that Father, there was a, a real storm on the outside so that the people in the ship was, was shaken up, so to speak. But we understand that Jonah was asleep in the ship, which reminds us of Messiah's sleep on the boat when the storm was going on in the New Covenant and uh, Peter and other disciples, there was a storm there also and the Messiah was asleep in the boat. Here with Jonah, hallelujah, here Jonah, he knew that he was the reason why the storm was going on because he wasn't obedient to our father. So they tried to figure out who on the ship wasn't, had made the gods angry. And Jonah just said, just throw me overboard. And then, you know, the storm will cease. I'm just paraphrasing this in, in a kind of way. So we have, we have the picture of the Messiah in the new covenant. We have a picture of Jonah in the old covenant. Jonah knew his God. Of course, you know who, who Messiah is. He know the God of Israel because he called him our father and he is the word. Hallelujah. And so you see this calmness with both of them. What about you tonight? What is raging around you and maybe you have your peace in the midst of your challenge that you're going through because you have faith and you have understanding and believing that the God of Israel is the one that's fighting your battles, then you have peace in the midst of your storm. Jonah had peace in the midst of his storm. Hallelujah. And I want to bring one more person in here, I think. You have Hannah. Keep it all in your mind. The Messiah who's here for you so that you can have peace in the midst of your storm or when things are shaking up and trying to um, uproot you and it's impossible because the king of Israel is seated inside of your heart and inside of his purpose and plan for your life. So he is that unshakable tree. You can't do anything with this particular tree because it's rooted forever and he's inside of you. 
And so you have uh, Jonah who had his peace. Then you have Anna, that Hannah, you know, Samuel's mom, that inside of her there had to be a storm going on because she was she wanted to have a child. And so she she was going through her storm or probably asking herself, what's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? I obey, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, et cetera. So that can be very distressing. But Hannah knew where to go to get her answer. She went to the priest and, you know, the priest said, go your way, Hannah, and make the God of Israel grant your petition, which it happened. So, you know, Hannah went through her process, and in the process, she got her baby. And further than that, she got additional blessings. But she had to meet the challenge. She had to go to the God of Israel. And although Jonah went running, he still had to obey the God of Israel. You know why? Because Father put a purpose and a plan in you. He put his greatness in you. And because of that greatness that he has placed in you, then you need to understand that no matter what, no matter what Jonah did, his, the purpose for which he was called, it still manifested itself. So the same thing with you. And that's what Father wants you to know. With your gifts and with the challenges that you meet and with maybe you've just lost your, your mom or maybe you just got news that your, 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 your son is going to jail or you may have gotten news that your wife that you've been married to for so many years is breaking up with you and you may have the kind of storm that you have your big house and all, and you have your car and you're able to pay your bills week after, or a month after month, whatever the bills are due. You didn't have no worries, but all of a sudden, your business moved out of town and moved to another country. And here you are wondering how you're going to take care of everything because maybe you didn't put enough away that you should have put away. That's a storm. What will the neighbors say? Sometimes people say, what will the neighbors say? But if you belong to the God of Israel, you know there's a purpose and a reason for this change that is in your life. And knowing that if you have this situation and there's a, a house situation and it seems like a storm and something's always coming at you from, from another area, by the time you get one area fixed up, another area seems to fall apart. But our Heavenly Father is moving things out of our lives. And not only things, he's moving people out of our lives. And not only people, he's also separating some of us from our family members because they have become a stumbling blocks. And what I'm trying to say is nothing is going to stop this. This is why Father showed us that the Messiah and, and Peter seeing a, a Messiah coming toward him in the storm. Let me back up a bit. And Peter looking and see, they thought it was a, was a ghost and, you know, then they found it was the Messiah and Peter saw the Messiah and Peter wanted to walk on the water because he wanted to demonstrate, I'm saying this, wanted to demonstrate that he had great faith. So Messiah said, okay, come on. And Messiah is saying to you, go ahead on out there and do what I called you to do. I want you to do. I'm always saying it, but it's true. Your purpose and plan that he has for you, he put it in, Psalm 139, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and that the thoughts he have toward you are like grains of sand. That's a whole lot of thinking going on. And so therefore, hallelujah, Peter went on the water. And you know what happened? The storm was boisterous and the wind was, was carrying on and everything was going on around it. And so it got his attention. And so he began to look at the circumstances and what happened. Then he began to sink, and, and he called on a, a Messiah, and then Messiah took his hand. You know what, what the whole story is, is that he, they went through the storm, through the process. What was the process? So that you can focus on the God of Israel, so that you can focus on the one who created you, so that you will not give up no matter what. No matter what happens, you will not give up. The one inside of you that is the treasure in your earthen vessel has given you the strength and given you the knowledge, given you wisdom under every circumstance. 
I, in, I, I guess I want to just encourage you and, and encourage myself that though you may look and there's nobody acknowledging what you're doing or nobody shows appreciation, and the God of Israel woke you up, put a smile on you, your bones are working, you're able to walk, you're able to talk, you're able to eat, and your food digests. Be happy because these are all ways that Father lets you know that he loves you. You may be somebody wrestling with a diagnosis from the doctor. And, and I'm telling you, it is the truth. When I look in the word that our God, and I know these are things you've heard already again, but when you look in the word and you see that the physician healed those people, of leprosy. He healed them of leprosy. It seemed a hard thing for somebody to have faith to be healed of cancer. But according to what we read in here, if we do not give up and continue to talk to Father, it will happen. Jonah finished his job. You know he did. He went through the storm, his process, whatever. But he had peace in his heart. And he, st he obeyed Father in the end. And he did what he was called to do. Father is saying the same thing to you. Be still and know that I am God. And the plan and purpose that I have for you, it is going to come to pass. And this is what the Father showed me. He said, he said to me, he said, share with them about the baby. When a baby is conceived, and the baby began to grow in the womb. That is the way Father gives us gifts. They become thoughts. And the thoughts bring more thoughts because there's a creation, a creative process that's going on, just like the creative process in the womb. And when that baby is formed and a birth intake is taking place just like your creativity it a birthing has to take place the birthing means that it will come out so others can see your gift and then the father said now when I made the baby and this is you too he said when I made the baby I put in that baby two sets of teeth that's going to come forward in its time. But he said when the baby is born. You don't see those sets of teeth. And it's much like the gift that father placed in you. For what he called you to do. Whatever that may be. Great singer. Great hostess. Great whatever it is. Doesn't matter what it is. Just think about that baby. Those teeth. Those two sets of teeth. Are there in that baby. Already programmed into that baby. So that as that baby grow and as your gift grow, then other things take place. This baby can't walk when it's born into this world. Your gift, you have to do something. We help the baby. The baby, uh, when it comes time for the baby to start walking, we take the baby's hand. We try to encourage the baby. People encourage us with our gifts when they are coming forward. And... All the things, eventually we hope and pray that the baby grow up and become a grown man. But all that, that, that underarm hair and, and hair in the, the, uh, the uh, private, all this hair, it's always in that baby when that baby was birthed into this world. But the timing of it had to take place like your gift. Everything that Father is doing has a timing. And if you don't let go of it, if you don't give up on it, it will manifest. Some people are grown at 21, and some people still act like little kids. But it's a process. What household did they grow up in? Did they grow up and their mother was always drunk, and their father was always beating on folk? Then that child is growing up, and the circumstances in the environment also has an influence on the child. But the plan and purpose that Father has placed in you, it doesn't matter what household you come out of. When you acknowledge 
the God of Israel, and when you come to know his son or not know his son, if you're working on your gift, it's going to manifest. And so Father wants you never to give up. There is greatness in you. I can sit, stand here and say, I know our God told me that I, my writing was, 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 was going to be as great as Isaiah and, and David and all of those. And you may say, well, who, who do she think she is? Well, Father wants you to know who you are and that what he put in you, that greatness, he's going to bring it out of you. We have greatness in all of us. Some of us spend years trying to discover it. And I believe that's why Father has set things up in a certain way and given you the Messiah. He gave us the Messiah. And you know, you, you and, and saying I'm supposed to be helping to bring the Hebrew roots. And I guess a lot of times I'm, I'm talking about Jesus and I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the word and, and maybe I'm not doing as much as some of you may wish that I would do because of what I said we are called to do. But if we do not get the basic foundation of, of, of even the word itself, how are we going to know when Father's given you the basic foundation of the gifts he put in you for it to emerge? And he's always going to have somebody let you know that your gift is making a difference. What it is, our gift must touch somebody's life. Our gift must be used to help people and their lives will change because Father has put gifts in us that makes a difference in the people's lives that we come in contact with just as their gifts make a difference in our lives as well. We are in this world to work together as a unit for those that are born again. There's one big, I call it one big tree, which is the Messiah. And we are the branches. And so if all of us branches are on this tree, then we are supposed to be here, we're on one tree. We're not on, y'all on all different trees out here. We got the word of our God in us. We are called to help each other. That means giving advice, giving counsel, helping where help is needed because this tree has got the Messiah. And you can't get any better than this because the Messiah opens the door so that you can talk to the God of Israel. I mean, this this thing still gets to my, my mind and causes me to just wipe my eyes sometimes when I think I'm really talking to the God of Israel. I'm really talking to the God who made heaven, earth, the sea, and everything in it. He really hears me. He really called me to make a difference. Yes, he called me and he called you to make a difference. So when the storms come, because they come, sometimes they come through a broken toe. Sometimes they come through a broken arm. Sometimes they come through a broken tooth. It could come anyway. But Father is the one that created the body and it's a storm in a body when a toe is broken. <laughs> All parts of that body say that our toe hurt. It's not like there's that toe down there. That toe better go somewhere by itself. Uh, we're going to get this toe and set it over there in that corner. And when that toe get itself together, then we'll hook it back on, my, on the body. No. When that toe hurt, which means when you hurt, all of us hurt. And you may think we're lying, but Father, I'll be in my house. And the Father had me praying for someone. I don't know. He'll give me names. And pretty soon you'll hear from the person or you'll talk to the person. And the time you were praying, you know that they were going through something. I know I'm kind of talking a, a lot here, but the storm and the challenges in our lives, hold fast to your faith and the word that will help you through. You are made specifically for a purpose. 
And no, you're not going to do it like anybody else. Your life is different. You were, you were born, uh, you could have been born the same time other people were born, but you were still born as no other person like you. It doesn't matter whether they look like you, you could be twins. You are still not the same person. And so Father has put inside of us this greatness. Why? So that he can draw people to his son. So that he can have more children in his house. Hallelujah. When I look at Psalm 148 and I see all the time you can, you can praise your way out of a situation. Just if you're praising Father, you're not concentrating on the situation that you're in. You're constantly saying, praise ye Yahuwah. Praise ye Yahuwah from the heavens. Praise ye Yahuwah from the, uh, praise ye Yahuwah sun and moon. Praise him, stars, and just talking to him over and over again. So, are you in a storm tonight, or are you meeting a challenge tonight? Did they take your house away? Did they take your car away? What did they do? Did they freeze your account? What have they done? That you have to look above all the circumstances and look to the God of Israel who made all these people that are involved in your life. And the Father, Father can put somebody, take a, like a chess board, he can take one piece of chess and move it over here. He can take a person that said no to you and cause that person to say yes. Or if that's not the person, he can speak to somebody else that you don't know anything about and have them to help you. No matter what it is, I, I go through life and a lot of people say, but I don't read very well. There is, there, there, Father has help for absolutely everybody. Now, we're going to end this up with Psalm 23 that we all have said this at one time or another. I think, I think a lot of us live with Psalm 23 in our hearts. So every storm that we go through, if you hear that your sisters and brothers, you don't close the door and sit down and say, but I thought. She was. You're supposed to pray and intercede for Father to help them. You are a soldier in this army. And what happens to your sister and brother, it, it has an effect on you, meaning you are supposed to help them. Let me just read this for somebody tonight that might be going through some kind of a situation. We are all meeting challenges no matter, no matter who we are. And the times when you are smiling and everything is happy, I like to say all the time, give it all you got because other challenges are always going to come, but you find yourself getting through them faster than ever before. Sometimes it's only take a few minutes to get through it. With some people, it may take a, a, it may take a, a, a few days to get through it, but go through your processes and allow the Holy Spirit to, to reveal to you what he's doing and to encourage you. I'm going to read this from the King James Version, which says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's powerful right there. We could stop right there, close the program and go home. Because it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And that, in that for me, it speaks to me that no matter what I stand in need of, what is important to my life is going to come. I'm not talking about stuff I just want to have. But the things like health, like strength, a place to live, having a, you know, a health insurance, having those things that you need to have to live in this world, I shall not want. That's what you say. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Why would he make you lie down in green pastures? If it's not to give you peace in the midst of all your storms and challenges of life. He makes us to lie down in a peaceful place. He leadeth me beside the still waters, beside the calm waters. There are many of us that say, when I get by water, I feel a calmness. And the Father calls his, his word, Messiah say, I have living waters. The word is water. So 
that living waters and that calmness is, is also inside of you. He restores my soul. He restores us. When we've gone through the storm and we've been so shaken, then he restores the calmness. He speaks peace to us because he loves us. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake so that he can let the world know that he have people that are walking in righteousness. He set it up this way. He wants the world to know that he have children that is following him. And so he leadeth us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's a big one. I will fear no evil. Don't fear it, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You will dwell because goodness and mercy is following you and because you have the Messiah in your heart. And where the Messiah is, there is the Father also. Where the Messiah is, that is the Word also to comfort you and to bring forth out of you that greatness so that the world may marvel at the great work Father is doing through you. So go through the process. Go through your storm. Because the storm don't last but a short time. And it shakes loose those things that Father wants to shake loose from your life. You are special. So uh, we praise our God and ask him to bless you and allow you to feel the presence of the angels that, that have your arms and is carrying you for his great name's sake. Go through your storm. Because there is something mighty powerful and wonderful waiting for you. Hallelujah. So thank you again for tuning in. And remember, every storm we go through, Messiah is leading the way. Shalom upon you. May the God of Israel bless and keep you in health and in strength. And tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen.